let us pray our gracious heavenly father we thank you for the wonderful day we thank you for its brightness thank you for the beginning of this month fill every day of this month with your goodness we also thank you for this holy hour in which we devote upon your scriptures help us and inspire us to the th- teaching of our lord jesus that we shall live not only as professing christians but as christians in practice we ask this in the name of our lord and savior jesus christ during my school final days i had an elderly teacher who was very devout hindu he used to smear his forehead with sacred ash and uh, with kumkum in middle but he harbored high respects for our lord jesus christ and would often talk about his teaching in the class we also had one newly converted christian boy of pentecostal leaning always on a lookout to evangelize and he once said to the master sir outwardly you look like a devout hindu but i'm sure in your hearts you worship jesus as god don't you the elderly teacher replied saying jesus is more than a god to me he is a teacher whose teaching i must follow today is we celebrate teachers sunday and i greet all the teachers of this congregation i, I express my gratitude to all the teachers involved in teaching professions in many ways i express my gratitude on behalf of all my congregations for the life and work for the various way in which they have inspired our lives and touched our lives and shaped us may god bless you may god fill the lives of all the teachers with his loving kindness grace peace and happiness many devout non christians educated an orthodox and also people belonging to lower strata of the society do not have any issues in accepting jesus as a teacher whose teachings they must follow as a teacher has said jesus is more than a god to me he is a teacher jesus is more than a god to me he is a teacher whose teachings i must follow the sermon theme for today is jesus the guru or teacher and the question this sermon poses to our congregation is this can jesus be more than a god to us can jesus be a teacher whose teachings we must follow this may sound controversial but having jesus as god is easier than having him as a teacher whose teachings we must follow we are all professing christians but are, are we christians in practice professing and practicing are different matters altogether we may consciously profess christianity but a heretic or an atheist may follow the teachings of christ subconsciously a famous hindu philosopher vivekananda has pictured the ethos of christian people when he said the church tries to fit christ into it not the church into christ the church tries to fit christ into itself but not the church into christ the educated and philosophic india have always perceived a vast gap between the teachings of jesus christ and the lived life of christians in this nation several attempts were made by western evangelicals to convert 
Mahatma Gandhi to Christianity. They know that he harbored great respect for Jesus Christ and his teaching. They also realized that he had great influences upon the people in every corner of the nation. They thought that it will be a shortcut walk to convert India if Gandhi becomes a professing Christian. And that is what Gandhi resisted. And he tersely said, I like your Christ. I do not like your Christians. Your Christians are so unlike your Christ. Your Christians are so unlike your Christ. He was willing to practice the teachings of Jesus Christ, but he was unwilling to join the league of Christians who are so unlike Christ. The famous Supreme Court judge, a fierce leftist and an ardent human rights activist until his last breath, Justice V. R. Krishna Iyer wrote an eloquent opinion about Jesus titled Remembering a Glorious Rebel. Kindly Google and read that wonderful piece, Remembering a Glorious Rebel. Just as V.R. Krishna Iyer says, to share and care for your neighbor, even your enemy, were the fundamentals of Jesus Christ. This is the Christianity to be practiced daily not the Christianity for a Sunday ritual. Are we all happy Sunday ritual Christians? Sunday services, worship gatherings is a unique feature of Christianity. Whenever we come together, we meet each other, we greet each other, renew our relationship, we have a community worship together, and this worship service, this fellowship rejuvenates us. But we should see that there is a danger of this becoming a Sunday ritual. Rituals in any religion have a capacity to give a strange satisfaction that we have satiated the expectations of God. Rituals helps the bhakta to forget about God. He or she can carry on his or her life without the fear of a threatening deity. Rituals give an assurance that the God who had received your rituals will benignly protect you from every evil. People began to worship Jesus ritually only after churches and cathedrals were built during the 4th century when Roman Emperor Constantine recognized Christianity as one of the state religions. When Jesus lived in Palestine, people never worshipped him ritually. People always swam him wherever he went, whether he went to a mountainside or he went to um, a seaside or he was traveling on a plane or were traveling to Jerusalem, people avidly gathered around him to listen to his teaching. Jesus was recognized as a teacher and was respected as such. And we should never forget that in the great commission that Matthew, uh, Jesus gives in Matthew last chapter 28, we often delete a very important verse, verse number 20, which says, and teaching them to obey everything I command you. We stop, the church stops with verse 19, which says, baptizing them with water and Holy Spirit, uh, in the name of Father, Son, and, Holy Spirit, uh, and the Holy Spirit, and we stop with that, we do not quote Verse number 20, which says, and teaching them to obey everything and I command you, which is the integral and most important part of the commission of the church. Church has a responsibility to teach what Jesus taught to everyone. 
And what about the early church? They did not have any churches to go to. In the initial chapters of the Acts of Apostles, we see the beginning church trying to put into practice what all Jesus Christ has taught them and how he lived. In Acts chapter 2, verses 42 to 47, and chapter 4, verse 32 to 37, we see people trying to live the way that Jesus lived, a communitarian and socialist life in which they sold everything and gave, shared everything with those who did not have, and they broke bread together. They identified themselves not by going to any church, but by practicing what Jesus taught them so that the members belonging this, to this early church was identified as people belonging to the way. That's what we find in Acts chapter 9, verse 2, when Paul asked the high priests for letters to the synagogues at Damascus so that if he found any who belonged to the way, men and women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Except King James Version, all the other translations have capital W for way, indicating that it is a name for the new group of people who are following the percepts of Jesus. They were practicing what they were taught by Jesus Christ, the teacher. Apostle Paul came onto the stage preaching about Christ, his crucifixion and resurrection. And he introduced Jesus as an equal divine to God Yahweh, whom Jews worshipped as God. He was essentially addressing to Jews. With Saint Paul, the process of recognizing Jesus as fully divine came to a completion. And we read in Colossians chapter 1, verse 15, how Paul defines Jesus as equally divine to God in heaven. And I, re and I read verse 19. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. But still after 300 years, still after that, st still for 300 years, they did not have any churches to go to. Still for 300 years when Roman persecution was severely uh, chasing them, the Christians were identified all over the Roman Empire by their moral conduct and ethical character. And they were imprisoned and they were tortured because the way of their life. Of course, Jesus is a Lord and God to us, as Paul Brings it, brings it up in the epistle to Colossians. Jesus is our Lord. Jesus is our God before whom we genuflect, whom we worship. But we should not allow the worship of Jesus as God to become a quid pro quo arrangement. Any worship of God has this danger of descending to a quid pro quo arrangement where God, I worship you, you bless me. I repose faith in you, you protect me. This is the quid pro quo arrangement. Worship of a deity gives a false satisfaction of serving a deity. We call our morning service our, as a service, 8.30 service. We just drive into the church, sit in the pews under the fan, we sing a few songs, utter a few prayers, listen to the messages, and we deceive ourselves saying that we have served God. Rituals and religious paraphernalia enhance the sense of satisfaction that you have served God. Ethical conduct or a moral character of a worship does not come into question. Neither does the worship of a God has any bearing on the question of neighborly relationship and your social commitment. The parable of Good Samaritan in Luke chapter 10 
brings this contradiction into discussion. The priests and the Levites think by ritually serving God, they are absolved of their social responsibility to a fallen human being. And they think that their ritual service to God certify their moral character. The Samaritan, a supposed heretic, shows the human neighborly love that Jesus has taught. Sermon on the Mount, found in Matthew chapter 5 to 7, is another lengthy exposition of the practical religiosity, moral responsibility, and the neighborly commitment of a person. Here, Jesus is stressing first on your personal relationship of one worshipper with another built on brotherhood, justice and concern. If you bring your offering and you have something against your sister or brother, lay it down, go and reconcile. And secondly, Jesus is stressing upon the personal devotion of a worshipper to God. Jesus never appreciated public display of piety as we find in Matthew chapter 6. Jesus always stressed on the personal side of religiosity and the public side of social responsibility, which is your social witness. Jesus always stressed on the personal side of your religiosity and the public side of your social responsibility, your social witnessing. That is why People who read Jesus' gospel will always be attracted instantly to his teaching, no matter what religion that they belong to. Anyone who is in search for a higher moral and ethical standards of life will be attracted to Jesus' teaching for a practical life and practical religiosity. Accepting Jesus as teacher means that we practice what all Jesus has taught. Believing Jesus as God and worshiping Jesus ritually is easier, but having Jesus as your teacher whose teaching you must follow, you must practice in, in your life is challenging. M.K. Gandhi once said that Christians obscure Christ. Christ is obscured by Christianity. This is worse than saying Christians are unlike Christ. It is the professing Christians who obscure and distort the image of Christ by their lackadaisical Christian witnessing. Christ becomes blemished through our lives if we do not practice what Christ has taught in our everyday life. Dearly beloved in the Lord, let your light shine, calls Christ. Let your light shine forth in and through our lived life in the community and in our neighborhood. Let us not obscure Christ by our unwitnessing life in our society. We are called upon to go beyond just being a worshiping Christians to practice what Christ, our teacher, has taught us. From being professing Christian, may God help us through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to become practicing Christians. Jesus is our teacher whose teachings we must follow in our lives. Once again, may God bless all the teachers of our congregation.